Greetings, it's David Williams once again from Okanagan College. Today's topic is demultiplexers. Now demultiplexers are the opposite of multiplexers. So if you've seen the multiplexer video, you just think of a multiplexer and reverse it. So a demultiplexer has one input and then a select signal that selects which one of the outputs that input gets mapped to. So once again, it is pretty much a switch. And if we take a look at our little circuit here, we've got our one input and it can go to one of these two outputs based on the value of this select signal here. So remember in the in the um, multiplexer video I had a setup like this where there was two sets of two people trying to talk to each other and so let's say A0 was trying to to talk to B0 and A1 was trying to talk to B1. We only had one actual physical connection for, for our communication channel. So we had a, a multiplexer over here and this multiplexer was going to select based on based on a select signal coming in which one of A0 and A1 was actually connected to the output line. And then over here we had another connection and another select signal that was de deciding which one of the connections was made either to B0 or B1 to receive this communication. We had a multiplexer over here, two possible inputs, only one of them gets mapped to the output, and a D multiplexer over here, one input, and that gets mapped to only one of the two outputs. So we've got multiplexer and demultiplexer. And we have a really simple system here where we're just switching, if, uh, let's say, S was these two S signals were switching at the same time. So A0 would talk to would talk to B0 and then it would switch to A1 to be able to talk to B1 and switch back and forth and we'd be able to carry on communication. Even though access to the line is only granted for half the time. This is actually called um, time division multiplexing and and this type of system could be expanded to instead of just having two communicators, two sets of communicators. We could have, let's say, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight inputs to this eight to one mux. One output going over to the input of this one to eight D mux. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And with eight signals, we're going to need three select bits. Same thing over here, three select bits. And as long as these two, the, the select bits here and the select bits here are changing at the same time and selecting the, the proper person that the communication is supposed to be sent to, we're going to have essentially uninterrupted communication. Even though it is being interrupted, um, you've got a specific time slot that you're going to be able to send it, send the, the data through on. Right, so that's where a demultiplexer could possibly be used. Let's now look at the design of a demultiplexer. And let's look at a, a 1 to 4 demultiplexer. So let's just shorten this with to demux. So this 1 to 4 demultiplexer has one input. Let's call this signal I. And four outputs. 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's label these out 3, output 2 output 1 and output 0 and then the signal comes into I and gets mapped to one of these four outputs and the ma the output that it gets mapped to is dependent on the value of S1 and S0 so if S1 S0 equals 1 1 then I gets mapped to output 3. If 1s0 equals 1, 0, then i gets mapped to output 2. If s1s0 equals 0, 1, then i gets mapped to output 1. And finally, if s1s0 equals 0, 0, then 
output i gets mapped to output or input the input i gets mapped to output 0 so in order to to come up with the logic for this let's just consider the case where s1 and s0 is equal to 1 1 then the value of output 3, remember output 3 is going to be our output. Output 3 is a 1 if S1 is a 1, if S0 is a 0, and if I is a 1. In all other cases, output 3 will be a 0. Output 3 is going to supposed to be a 0 if S1, S0 equals 1, 0, 0, 1, or 0, 0. And output 3 will also be a 0 if S1 is 1, S0 is 1, but i, the, the input data, is a 0. I'm just going to quickly change colors here to, to uh, distinguish my lines. So the following that same basic logic, output 2 is going to be a 1 if s1 is a 1, s0 is a 0, and i is a 1. For any other case, output 2 will be a 0. Output 1 will be a 1 if S1 is a 0, S0 is a 1, and I is a 1. In all other cases, output 1 will be a 0. And finally, output 0 will be a 1 only if S1 is a 0, S0 is a 0, and I is a 1. So if S1 is a 0, not S1 will be a 1. If S0 is a 0, not S0 will be a 1. And of course, if I is a 1, then I is a 1. 1 and 1 and 1 is 1. It makes output 0 a 1. In any other case, output 0 will be a 0. And of course, we could do the same basic thing if we had a 1 to 8 demultiplexer. We're going to have seven different outputs. Output 7 will be equal to, let's call our S select bits S2, S1, and S0. So if S2, S1, and S0 are all 1, so 1, 1, 1 makes up the number 7. So we're outputting, to, outputting I to 7. That would be the, the expression for output 7. Output 6 would be selected if S2, S1 were a 1, but S0 was a 0, and I was a 1. So those values select output 6, and I will, would determine what value actually gets put on output 6. And you can hopefully figure out what all the other six expressions are going to be for output 5 down to output 0. So just a, a quick introduction, a quick overview of what a demultiplexer is, and how you would use a demultiplexer, where you would use a demultiplexer, and finally, how you would design the inner workings of a demultiplexer. Hopefully you learned something today and I will see you in the next video.